got an opinion about how the son of man, son of the forgiven Mary, son of God. So I went to Oticon this year, and that used to be a thing I would do every year uh, until, you know, uh, an unnamed virus decided, uh, no, you're not doing that. Uh, but this year I did go. Um, it sucked because, like, we still had to wear masks and everything, but, you know, it is what it is. Now, I want to get out and say also that, um... I'm not particularly a huge fan of anime. Um, I, there's animes I've watched that I liked, uh, but mostly it's just kind of cool to go to these things because you get to see a lot of cool stuff. People put a lot of hard work into costumes. There's a lot of really great artists and just cool things in general that you can buy or, you know, pee pee, pee on or uh, poo poo. It's also really funny when like you get in the elevator of your hotel and there's like some businessman, you know, he's like some like big executive man guy or something. And he's like, why, why is everybody all dressed up? And then you go, there's this nerd convention. You wouldn't even understand because you're an old boomer. But like I said, you know, it's cool just to get, to get away from home and go do something. And uh, it's, you know, it's in Washington, D.C. I don't, know if, I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but it's this place that exists and it's right there here's the picture of it and um yeah just watch uh anyways i'm gonna stop rambling now and here's like some stuff i saw
<laughs> You're all good. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, here comes this guy. Who got the hog? So something I wanted to mention because you know, in this these next few clips you're gonna see a lot of me. Uh, I was dressed up. Me and my friend RJ, you know, we do Mario and Luigi every year and we usually try to do like a different uh, like occupation or something like that to make it interesting so we're not just boring old regular Mario and Luigi like everybody else. Um, last time we did like Lumberjacks, which was pretty cool. And this time we were like, hey, you know, biker Mario and Luigi, you know, the, so here's that. It's right here. That's us. We're the bike men. Uh, but anyways, like I said, you're going to see me here in the, these next few clips. Uh, basically what happened was I met an artist there, um, and I just, I really liked his art a lot, and I was talking to him. I always try to ask them, like, how they do stuff, and, you know, because I, I do art too, and I want to learn. Um, but, you know, I talked to him for a bit, and then we just, we walked away, and I was like, hey, hey stinkus, idiot, butthead, brain, uh, uh, you could have recorded that and that would have maybe been you know good for the video so I went back to him and I explained that and I said can I interview you and he was like super super excited about it he was like a hundred percent down and uh, that's here this is what next now uh, so to start off with uh, what's your name so my name is Pui Che and then we are here in Otakon at uh, the Pui Illustrated Pui so I, I, I wanted to talk to you. I, I mean, I really love this. We were talking earlier, but just the uh, the way that you make this art, uh, I guess first off, like how do you go about it? Yeah, so essentially the, the painting process that I work with is called Control Chaos, which sort of starts with a bit of an abstract, where there's a bunch of splashes of paint everywhere, and I slowly do a bit of a control part. So therefore it's more of an intertwining dance between myself and the muse. Muse being the nice sister, daughters and sisters, and goddesses of memory. The idea is that when we are able to create these uh, tributes to a uh, unseen force, we're able to have a much wider spectrum of creativity, creative pursuits, and likewise it's one of the more older classical uh, thinking uh, uh, process as well. Yeah, that's a yeah. really interesting perspective yeah. and very poetic. Yeah, I find uh, art is fascinating because at the end of the day it's just a canvas space yeah. and it's how we can express that space. Exactly, yeah, yeah. I agree 100%. Yeah, and um, particularly with the War Magander piece, it's a setup too, so we have, it's from a Norse mythology, so we have your Magander here and then the second one is to be Midhawk. So the, the, those two are essentially uh, serpents of different... Um, right, like the world serpent yes. is Jormungandr. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. So they are, they both have different um, sort of um, representations. The idea with the, this depicted here is that Jormungandr is more of a prim primordial interpretation and that he is both a guardian serpent and that he devours life itself. And then Nidhogg uh, devours uh, death. Yeah. The idea is that it's similar to a uh, mycelium network in that as Nidhogg, imagine it's a property where if Nidhogg is not there, bodies will lay waste mm -hmm. and it will not recycle. Right, right. So therefore, when you have a ability that's capable of recycling life, so therefore eat life and therefore it's much like mushroom, it's a network that is capable of recycling a lot of different uh, rocks and sort of therefore that's how the cyclical of life be so right, therefore right. this is more of a uh, Puritan no uh, a much earlier um, interpretation before the, the sort of Christianity Christianity interpretation of these serpent be, serpents being evil in that it's not necessarily evil or good force right. it's there to, to sort of recycle things it and it's, it's perfect yes yeah. and it's up to us to interpret how they are so yeah there's yeah. a lot more yeah the Norse mythology is quite fascinating and then I am sort of uh, inspired by all the different mythologies so that's why you see a bunch of different mythology works yeah. in there too and you were 
saying like as far as like actually doing the artwork that you use uh, just regular like yeah. graphite pencils so and paint. Yeah. Yeah. And so you also do like some digital stuff too, right? Correct. So while this is all traditional painting, I do uh, work with digital mediums. So when it's digital mediums, I have a large uh, 32 inch uh, monitor at home with a stylus so I can paint directly on top. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love this. Um, I, I told you earlier, I'll say it again, uh, the four or five years that I've been coming yeah. here, uh, you're my favorite artist oh, so far. So yeah, much. I, I love this. Again, with so much of the details and things going on, a lot of my work is more about creating dreamscapes and thought forms. So then, yeah. therefore, it's more about allowing the, allowing the mind to move in that camera space and sort of flow and move about the different elements and sort of allow you time to sort of play with the mind a bit and then sort of more relaxations and sort of focus on different elements. Well, you're a really interesting guy to talk to. Yeah. Uh, if I could, I'd, a, I'd sit here all day, but... Yeah. We can also do a more zoom in, zoom in uh, version, yeah, but that way you can sort of view all the different um, details of the piece as well. Because it's all done with uh, a lot of different mixed media, so therefore there's so much things going oh, on. Oh yes, there definitely usually is. Usually the camera wouldn't be able to capture fully either. Yeah, that, uh, that, that wasn't something that I was like intending on doing for the video. I just was going to film like, I guess just wing it. That's kind of what I do. Just, hey, that, that looks neat. I'm going to, you, you know, and then I, hey, that also and then I record it or I just like pull the camera out and I just start talking and hopefully something stupid or funny comes out which I mean usually it's stupid but um anyways um we were recommended to go interview some of his other artist friends and I was like cool I guess I did a good enough job <laughs> he wants me to go talk to these guys too uh so there were there were two more and uh here's the first one Alright, uh, uh, can you introduce yourself? Um, yeah, my name is Key. Uh, I've been making art for about seven years or so. I uh, started my education in engineering and uh, I just tried out art and I kind of fell in love with it. So, um, with that engineering background, did that influence how you make the art? Like the medium you use and that sort of thing? Um, I think it had a big influence. Um, I think the biggest influences from my interest in like engineering and, and science were just the, my curiosities about things. So like when I look at things that inspire me, um, so much of the inspiration comes from biology and chemistry and just the mechanical elements of nature. Yeah. And so like art is beautiful in this visual way, but I'm really fascinated with visual language and how the more you understand the real world, the sort of better you get at reading that visual language. And I think understanding that visual language has so much to do with understanding the mechanics and the, the underpinning what it implies in nature and in sort of like the way that we just look at things. So like one of the, the things that I've been really fascinated in the past few years is fractals and plants. So they have this proportioning in their leaves and flower structures that imply a lot. Um, and there's so much you can learn just by looking at them visually and the proportioning that they have. Um, and you can learn so much about the way they grow, um, the sort of uh, architectural elements of a plant and why they grow that way. Um, so that sort of more technical side of looking at things, I think it's super inspiring in terms of leading to what ends up coming out of my art. That's, that's a really cool perspective. And like, even with this, just looking at it, like, I, I get, like you were talking about the mechanical aspects of nature. I mean, that's what this feels like to me, is just a representation of that idea. But I, I like this a lot, it's really cool. Um, I really appreciate you taking a minute to talk to me. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. So yeah, that was uh, interview number two. And uh, now, you guessed it, it's number three. Hi, so I'm Timothy Von Rieden. I'm better known as Von Art Online. And I am a traveling pencil artist. And I've been doing this for what, seven years now? Eight years? Eight years. So this is all, do you, 
are there like specific types of pencils you use? Is it just like a regular graphite pencil? Or? Regular graphite. I used to use mechanical a lot, but I've kind of switched more traditional pencils. And sometimes I'll use powdered graphite, but for the most part, yeah, just pencils. So what about this like gold part here? So anything that you see is gold, it's gold ink. And then on my bigger ones, I do gold leaf. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I mean, my background with art, I, I started out only doing pencil sketches and stuff. So this sort of speaks to me on that level. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you find it limiting to only use a pencil? Um, have you ever experimented with other things and just not oh, like yeah. it? Or so I used to teach, ironically, how to uh, paint in digital for seven years. So I actually am much better with like Photoshop and color and stuff than what you might see here. But there's something tangible and tactile with pencils that I really like. But I do agree, it's limiting in the sense where you have to basically use contrast and values in a way that speak what the illustration is trying to captivate uh, without the use of color or saturation, which can be difficult. But I'm such a fan of figuring out that puzzle that I really don't mind it at all. I might dive back into color actually in the next year or two, but as of right now, yeah, I really like the, the pencil side of things. And you know, I would say the, the limitations in a lot of cases bring creativity. And I, I would yes. say definitely with this. Yeah. Because you have to find those workarounds and having those really dark values like the skin against the light yes. values like the road. And it, it just, it's very pleasing to the eye. Yeah, and even with like, having darker values you have to like build them up so I feel like there's more of a purpose or like it's more intentional while you're building it up where sometimes when I would work with digital you could just slap down a whole value that's really dark and it's like instant where I think of with a lot of traditional mediums you have to build it up slowly so there's a lot more time and trying to figure out does this work does this look good for the composition. Yeah. Yeah. Well hey uh, thank you a lot. Uh, yeah no, thank you. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too. So yeah, like I said, I uh, completely didn't plan on doing interviews, but I did and I'm really happy I did. And I honestly think that that's the coolest part of this video. So I did actually do a couple more things while I was there. Um, I went to one panel. Um, they had the voice actors of Spike and Jet from the Cowboy Bebop anime there. Um, Steve Blum and Bo. Bo Billingsley, I think. I probably didn't pronounce that right, and I apologize. Um, they were really cool guys, uh, actually super down to earth. The whole panel was basically, they just had a microphone in the center of the room. You can line up and ask them questions. And I asked, um, you know, what their thoughts were on live action adaptations of animes, specifically ones that are kind of near and dear to a lot of people my age's hearts. And I, I appreciated what they had to say. It was it was very insightful. Um, you know, they didn't really have anything like overtly negative to say. Um, they had suggestions as to why a show can end up not working out. And they basically wanted to send home the message that, you know, nobody tries to make something bad. They all have something good in mind, but there's so many things that can get in the way, you know. Uh, investors in the show will want certain changes and everybody involved has changes they want to make and it just doesn't end up you know working out sometimes but yeah I guess that's it so if you if you made it to this point uh, I, I appreciate it you know um, I try to put stuff up you know every week or two you know if you subscribe you know yeah I'm doing that I'm, I'm asking for those um, yeah, comment, call me a poopy butt idiot. I you just say something that'll make the algorithm suggest a video to people. So, yeah, uh, you know, I, you know, I don't. Yeah. Run, 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 as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. You're a monster. I'm not the monster here. You are. You and the rest of that fairy tale trash poisoning my perfect world. Now tell me, where are the others? Eat 